Hey, look, uh, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know, I was talking with Dan the man earlier, and he thinks he's logical. And I don't want to bring this up, but he said that we don't even know the meaning of the word logical. I don't, I don't know the meaning. It wasn't much, it was mostly you. I don't know the meaning of logical. I'm the one who brought up the, you know, the, uh, the screw job thing. And I mentioned about, what's her name? I know, I know, but he said it. He said it. We don't know the meaning of the word logical. I'm not logical. I, what's her name? Ty. Ty. You see? I just hit Ty. Calm down, come in. Don't tell me to calm down. Nobody tells me to calm down. I don't know the meaning of logical. Come on now. I don't know the meaning of logical. I don't know if that's logical, but it sure as hell is funny. Welcome to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Thank you once again for joining us. Yes, this uh, episode is as funny as our failed attempt at a DX segment from 2006. Which, by the way, Sean Spears, slash formerly known as Ty Dillinger, formerly known as... Well, I think he's currently known as the chairman at AEW. <laughs> um, I apologize you didn't get the win over. You deserved it. But my God, you took a amazing spine buster from... The that, legend. That was, the, I think that was the highlight of the match, probably. Man, that pop that Arn Anderson got was great. But uh, yes, welcome to the Anything Wrestling Podcast. Uh, today's episode is a one on one with the Shant KO versus the advocate, the advisor, the man who knows logic and controversy, the commission. Um, before we get into two sponsors, uh, again, this is a one-on-one in regards to the review, or the preview, I mean, of 2019's WWE Clash of Champions, which is this Sunday, uh, where you can find it... Only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only $9.99. $9.99. It's not $10. It's not $1,000, and it's not one Million dollars, but nine ninety nine. Also, this episode is brought to you in part by the Anything Wrestling Podcast One Instagram account. It is slowly developing, coming up to fruition. Um, slowly going to post previous episodes, but if you click on the link in the YouTube in the Instagram bio. Uh, you can catch up with the furthest and most current episodes as well. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, follow. Let us know what you think. Um, but yeah, today is a preview of Clash of Champions 2019. Here's the thing. I was saying this off air that I kind of found it that last year's wasn't as memorable. Hell, there, it wasn't as memorable because there wasn't an event. I was going to say. Uh, I think the last Clash of Champions was in 2017. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I'll, I'll even mention just a few of the uh, matches that were on the card. Uh, AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal. <laughs> That's when that was going on? Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Randy Orton and Shinsuke, Shinsuke. Shinsuke. Nakamura. Uh... I guess Shane and Daniel Bryan were special guest referees. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, Charlotte Flair versus Natalya in a Lumberjill match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. How some things never change. No, of course. Uh, The Bludgeon Brothers versus... (laughs) Wow, I forgot about this team. Breezango. Oh, they're doing better in NXT now. And, yeah, as you can see, this wasn't a very memorable Clash of Champions. Much like Jinder Mahal's title reign. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we are here. And the task at hand is Clash of Champions. Uh, they got literally every belt on the line. There's a lot of belts nowadays. Um, seeing from this, it's... One, two, three, four, five, 
nine belts. Uh, Not including NXT belts, though. That would be a... Or UK. What, six more? Probably. Oh, God. Um, With that said, match breakdown guy, take it away. Oh, he's not here, so I'll be taking over. Wow. Um, We're going to start with what is the only two non-title matches, but first, this one is about a rivalry that is kind of coming to fruition, but also taking a sharp, twisted turn thanks to the likes of a one mastermind who I believe is a part of the storyline, creating it, Eric Bischoff. We have the Roman Empire of Roman Reigns versus the strong redwood, red-bearded ginger, Eric Rowan, without Daniel Bryan. Uh, Because, quote-unquote, he doesn't need anyone telling him what to do anymore. He doesn't listen to anybody. Is that why he keeps on joining factions? No. Um... I think that WWE, much like always, booked themselves into a corner. I think that this whole who ran over Roman Reigns was supposed to be revealed at SummerSlam. There was supposed to be a match. It got cut out. Then they exploited it up until now. They revealed this bald-headed guy, which looks like an Eric Rowan um, stunt double. Or um, kind of like if you're trying to recreate him in 2K. Yeah, exactly. Just a fail. bad attempt, yeah. yeah. Um... Here's the thing. I think I know where they're going with this. They want to convince that, oh, Daniel Bryan, he doesn't like liars. Daniel Bryan, but I think Daniel Bryan is the mastermind behind what happened. Through the whole time, right? I see as Rikishi is to Eric Rowan, as Triple H is to uh, Daniel Bryan, as Roman Reigns is to Stone Cold Steve Austin. But what, but what do you, who benefits out of this more? Daniel Bryan's already had a big career. But you, Roman has as well. I mean, is this a build-up for Rowan? Like, see, where, where are we weird. going with this? It's like, you wouldn't push Harper, but you're pushing Rowan? Now, not to demote Rowan, but I mean, Luke Harper has proved that even in singles competition, this guy can go. He's been close to championship gold in singles yeah. competition. But Rowan, it's been like, what did you do again? You've been muscle. You've been a tag champ. You've been both factions. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. At least Harper will be like, no, I've been a sheep. I've been a tag champion. I've been able to come close to winning singles gold. Hell, if you come close to winning Intercontinental gold, you've done something. Or contending for a number one contendership in exactly. a WWE match. Huh. Ironically, uh, SmackDown is playing in the background and Daniel Bryan is about to go to the ring. And like always, we always have WWE playing in the background. Regardless of what's playing. Um, again, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't, I don't even think they know where this is going to go. What do you do with it? I would say uh, play it like Daniel Bryan is, is the martyr, but then like reveal him to be the ultimate mastermind behind the whole thing. I think that's the only way you can save it, really. Um, but in regards to the match, what do you see happening? Who do you see winning? Well, I like I always say, this has to benefit someone and who comes out out of it. I think they're trying to go in a direction where Roman isn't looking as weak as he has. Um, so I, I think Roman comes with the win, personally. Shenanigans or straight up? Shenanigans. Okay. Because yeah. if we're going to reveal that Daniel is the real mastermind behind it, like... Roman will still win with shenanigans, but something bigger will come if they're trying to continue. Okay. Uh, Are you still enforcing your rule where we can have one match that we can say you it want goes this either to way? Be the one because this one's like kind uh, of. Well, see, it's a non-title match. It's more storyline based than for the title. So this will be the one, the gimme of whatever, like. Because there's only one other match, but it has some kind of implication. It's not a belt. It's... Well, what's your pick? I'll go Roman, but shenanigans. Uh, and we'll get Dan's picks later. Because if Roman goes over, then God help us all. Yeah. Okay, so moving forward, we have... Well, we'll play out after tonight's episode of SmackDown of who's in the finals from the SmackDown brand. Uh, we have an awaiting Baron Corbin, <laughs> or as he's dubbed himself, King Corbin, 
versus the winner of the match between Chad Gable or Elias. Who wants to walk with King Elias? I know I don't. Next match? Really? You're not even... <laughs> okay, he's griping still because... Hashtag there it is. push Cesaro. There it is. Um, look, you gotta... Go ahead. Go ahead. You want... Shot Dude. gets real? Sean hits you with the RKO? Or with the Sean KO? That, the, all right, that's the new segment. I, I'm, I'll give you a couple minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean is about to hit you with the Sean KO. Freaking Chad Gable is... I didn't expect him to go this far. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? Like, do, do, do you see where the disconnect is? Elias is already... No, he's not 24-7 champion. He was. I thought he could have no, brought... we have a Boston Celtic who is... The R-Truth took it back. Oh, he did? Yeah. Like, oh, I, didn't, I missed the Like part 15 after. seconds later, he took it back. <sighs> I thought Elias could have been your first very credible 24-7 champion uh, because it seems like that for a minute there, Drake Maverick would keep on trying, would keep on trying, and Elias would just kick him in the ass and go, no, not today, son. Is he still roaming New York looking for the 24-7 championship? I think so. Okay. Um, I just feel like, think about who you had in this tournament. You had, of course, Cesaro. You had Samoa Joe. You had Sami Zayn. You had all this great talent where, according to WWE, oh, we don't have enough, like, we don't have, we don't know what to do with them. King of the Ring always, to me, was a great tournament that you can use, as you have said, to push your Austins, to put your, push your Triple H's, to push your Kurt Angles, to push your Bret Hart's, your Owen Hart's, your Harley races. And it's like, honestly, the writing on, is kind of on the wall at this point. I think they're going with Corbin. I guess that's my pick. Um, do you think it okay? So I kind of all right. So everybody knows my feelings about Baron, of course. But there's always been these reports that supposedly Vince has this thing for Baron that he like. It's not like oh Vince, it's Vince's boy. Yeah, it's this whole thing. I guess where outside of the WWE, he does a lot. I guess for the community, for fans. Like he's the total opposite of what he does in his on job. Screen. On screen, he again, I always like like Dan, I've given credit where credit's due. He's playing your typical heel yes. where you, you hate him, you yes. don't agree with him, or you can't find a way to really <coughs> bless you. Thank you. You don't find a way to really agree with him uh, one day being a face. Yeah. You know? Which is what his job is supposed to be. Yeah. Maybe this tournament was built to give Corbin another chance. Because for a nanosecond, and I would, if, if, if this was in the books, I'm like, okay, go with Corbin pronto. They were planning for Shane McMahon. Oh, God, no. And it's like, we, let's have Corbin. I'll take Corbin. Let's, let's keep Shane. Like at this point, I thought the whole thing was after his rivalry with Kevin, we're getting you off TV. Supposedly, the plan was to pull Shane McMahon off TV. He kind of has slowly been fading away, though. Slowly. But I think there is a reason behind it. What would the reasoning be? Again, I heard that they're trying to keep him away off TV so that you kind of forget about him. And then Adam Norton. And then he pulls a uh, best in the world. Oh, God, not again. Um... If the tournament was up to you, it would have been Cesaro from Raw versus who from SmackDown? Elias? What's what's the... Who are the contenders? Think, I don't think it shows me the bracket here, oh. but it would have been Kevin Owens, Elias, Ali, Buddy Murphy, Chad Gable, Sheldon Benjamin, Apollo Crews, or Andrade. I would have had my final have been Cesaro versus Buddy Murphy. What, would you be okay with Cesaro versus Andrade? Yes. I've always said, and we reviewed this last week, it's mostly a heel yeah. who becomes the king. Right. If you can't imagine a, a reign for Cesaro as king, imagine a reign with uh, Andrade. 
Like, he adds that Latin flavor, like, you know, a Latin king, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it, it's like, you can push his heel likeness even further. To the moon. Like, I'm better than Ray. I'm better than any Hispanic competitor in the WWE has ever had. Hell, you can even say he's better, even though he's not. Better than Eddie Guerrero. And that would kind of motivate like, yes. a lot. Like, you would give heat to that person. And I think it would work with Andrade. But and I don't then think... You, and then you can book Rey Mysterio versus Andrade. Yeah. Or, I know you advocate for the guy a lot, but imagine, what what's his moniker? The Swiss Cyborg? Or the Swiss Superman, Swiss Cyborg. King of Switzerland. King, the European king. Royalty exuded. Give the guy an opportunity at a belt, finally. Because I, I, I'm, okay, I'm starting to kind of buy in. That the guy does need a championship ring. So what you're saying is... Uh, yes. Hashtag push Cesaro. Oh. What would you think I was going to say? You're coming all in. Oh, no. I'm not giving them credit. I mean, their last pay-per-view was actually decent. It was much better. No, I know. But just all in the idea of put hashtag yeah. push no, Cesaro. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least that. Yeah. But moving away from them. The 2.0s? That's what I'm calling them. The, uh, the 2.0. Oh, 2.0, your time is coming on TNT soon, and you're going to have to prove why USA Network dominated you. Just don't come out with the theme music saying it's my time. You know the funny thing is? You know who they hired to be like their uh, Gene Okerlund? Who? Tony Schiavone. <laughs> That'll put butt in seats. <laughs> <laughs> Moron. <laughs> But okay, you're going to go with King Baron between these three? I think at this point, they're, yeah. Cause I see, I'm going to go with Baron as well. I see Chad Gable winning. Like, to get to the final. Yeah, and then... And we're done. Because then at that point, it'll be who's the lesser of two evils? Chad Gable. And then they'll put a Corbin over. So let's move forward with actual championship matches yes. now. We have for the women's uh, tag team championship reign belts. Well, let's see how relevant it's become. Well, announce the match and then I'll talk to you about something. We have the team of the current champions, Little Miss Bliss. Lexi. And her crazy, demented, psychotic, want to come play with me partner. Nikki. Nikki Cross versus the... Ever so loving and desirable team of fire and desire with Corey Graves' favor, even though he's dating Carmella. Mandy Rose and her, uh, I forget what her moniker is, but it's pretty badass on her. Sonya Deville. Hair up and square up? Yeah, there we go. Um, what, okay, you said you're going to throw something out there. I'm not saying that it's the most relevant. But I guess I'm taking a survey here. Hey, yeah. Um, would you agree? And maybe you disagree. I don't know. But in all honesty, would you say that since those titles went around the waist of uh, Lexi and Nikki, that it's become at least somewhat relevant? I think it's become entertaining. Okay. And it's become at least... Oh, it's visible. It's actually on TV. Yeah, because what? We put the belts on the Iconics over, f- what, we're in September? Yeah. Yes, July, June, like five months ago on them, and we barely saw them on TV. Like the only way you would see those belts and them would be at live events or on Instagram. Or against local competitors. Yeah, and that's it. I think with the belts being on uh, Bliss and Cross, it it shows, okay, there is a women's tag division. There is women competition all over again. And I think WWE is trying to remember that. Like, yeah. oh, the women are selling tickets for us. Like, no offense to the guys, but the women are putting butts in seats. Who's in charge? Of Raw? Oh, I don't know. Some... Loudmouth advocate, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, his name is Paul Heyman, who represents the former 
defending undisputed universal champion Brock <laughs> I don't know how he does it how does he do it I don't know how he does it oh. Brock Lesnar sorry technical difficulties um but again, the Heyman effect is yeah, what I call Heyman it. Heyman effect is coming to fruition a lot lately on Raw, and we're seeing what people want to see. He knows what people want to see. I don't, I don't remember it, what it was, but it was on the network. I think it was the Raw reunion, and mm-hmm. there's a moment where Heyman is actually talking with Bliss and the, like character development and like subtle things that she can do to kind of like you know amp up the character. So I think that Paul Heyman like. Yes, he's an advocate for Brock Lesnar, but I think he's... He has an eye for talent. He he has an eye for female talent as well. I think he knows that, hey, females have kind of been put down for quite some time. They've been rising against the ranks. Now we got to, like... Really push the momentum on them even further. But even he predicted two years ago that Charlotte would eventually main event WrestleMania, even though we're sick of her. (sighs) But he was right. He was right. A woman would main event it, and he did say it would be her. He didn't say the other two, but he was right about that. Yeah. And he knows what the company needs. Granted, he's very vocal when things go bad. <laughs> um, but talking about these four in competition, yes. um, I think it was last week that Mandy and Sonya proved that they're worthy of a match. So I think... They earned their their yeah. contendership. Now, do I see a title change? I personally do. I think okay. Fire and Desire are going to win this one. Okay, that's fair. You're going with your girl? I'm going with Lexi and Nikki. Um, I think that they have something credible right now, and to, to just take it off of them immediately would be a little mm, not good timing. Um I like Mandy and Sonia. I'm, I'm more of an advocate for Sonia. I, uh, you and I kind of had a thing for her back in Elimination Chamber when she proved to be like, a, you know, a standout single player. Um, but I'm glad that, that they're pushed as a team because we all know the off-screen friendship that they have and they're very close buds. So I think that plays out on TV. But um, I, I would want Lexi and Nikki to go a long way, and then we get that one match where Nikki goes back to the, the crazy, twisted sister of NXT. Like she, like, Lexi brings it out of Nikki somehow. Yeah. But not in, like, I wouldn't want to say she backstabs her. I think it's like they lose drastically. Yeah. And it really affects her. Like, it makes Nikki, like, no, Alexa's mad at me. I, I failed for us, like I'm losing it yeah. and then And you can even have Lexi like we lost, it's your fault, like like shoving her, pushing her and But that's... not like to like a further extent like oh like I'm turning on you but yeah. like I'm just mad at you. Yeah. But it really pushes yeah. Nikki over. Essentially like it gets like what the fiend gets out of Bray Wyatt. I want that to come out of Nikki. That twisted dimension. There's dark something type. going on though. Because there's been rumors about they're trying to figure out that Sister Abigail puppet is more than what oh, really? people think. So supposedly there's a video, uh, I think WrestleMania put it out, I think, I forgot who, that one of the female competitors is the puppet. You it know. Would, it's always made sense to me. We brought this up maybe like 15, 20 episodes back where I told you. Nikki Cross would be a great, um, a She'd good act fit. with the Sister Abigail thing. Yeah, it makes sense, but I don't know. That's speculation, or maybe it is something they're trying to do. But maybe, hopefully, that doesn't get ruined. But you're going with Fire and Desire. I'm going with Lexi and Nikki. So we'll just have to see. Moving forward with the Raw Women's Championship, we have the current... Ah, I wish I could say how she said it in the ESPN commercial. Um, that commercial but remember, her great. name is Becky on the cup. And less foam, please. Uh, the current Raw Women's Champion, Becky the Man Lynch. The Baxter. Versus Basha Sanks. Fine, Sasha Banks. There it is. Uh-huh. 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 Okay. Um, 
Very, very. Uh, uh, okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just gonna... One more. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No. Uh, it's it's kind of weird right now. Sasha comes back, turns. What everybody apparently wanted. But then Bailey turns. What no one saw coming, even though they kind of wanted it. I'm throwing it out there right now. I see a double intertwined interference in both women title matches. Because I think if yesterday was any indication, I think... It seemed like Becky and Charlotte put aside everything. It's like, okay, we'll team up. But once that bell rings again, we're back to... Me and you. Yeah. Did you see when they were gearing up and she was putting on the They kept staring at each other down. And while yeah. Charlotte was like putting up her role, yeah. like, it's like, oh, I'm not taking my eyes off you, but... Yeah. But th- that was good with. because I wouldn't want talking. I've said this before. There's too much talking. No talking. Let the action speak. Let the body language. Yeah, speak. and and I think that's Paul again. That's the Heyman, the Heyman effect. effect. Yes. And the thing is, I get what the buildup is with Sasha coming back as a heel, being given the world by the old man, and I guess Paul had to agree with it. Um. My thing is, it's like, I, I, okay, I see shenanigans happening. I see, I hate that I'm going to say this. I think I see the belt moving. Really? Wow. With shenanigans. And I kind of want to predict this when we talk about the next match. You, you might agree with me. You may not, but I kind of see it happening. But I think there will be a new Raw champion. And, and okay. I can't believe I'm picking her. Sasha Banks wins. Is there an option for a no contest? You think we put that on the Roman match? Or, no, you could... If it happens out to follow away, yeah, no, that could be your choice. You could still um, get a point for it. Yeah, yeah, that's... I, I want that right, to so be no my contest. Choice. Yeah, I'm okay. thinking a no contest, like, they take it too far. Referee calls for the bell and goes, okay, that's it. Like, no contest. Um, but I think that what happens in that match will bleed over into the Bailey and Charlotte match. Okay, we'll get to that one because um, we now have, I guess this one was announced last Tuesday, the Intercontinental Championship will be on the line with your current champion Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke! Versus the A-lister, Mr. Hollywood, The Miz. Mr. Awesome. Lee Horrible. No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I... I don't... This isn't as, like, interesting, though. I, there's nothing that led up to it other than, what, Sami Zayn That's what I was going to say. I'm happy with Shinsuke finally being a champion and finally being on the card because that's been, like, a thing on its own. Well, when we saw them have the preliminary match between Finn and Shinsuke, we wanted Shinsuke to win. Yeah. And he did, but it's like... On the pre-show... He's kind of not been on TV, but he kind of has. And, and, and it's been interesting. And it seems like when he is, he's usually accompanied by someone else. In this case, Sami Zayn. Which is, I guess is now his vocal mouthpiece. Oh, that's, that's I just, weird. I honestly, I'm just, I'm going to throw this out there. I think a big problem was turning Sami Zayn heel. And I'm talking like way back to when... He came back. Yeah. So, well, this was what, before Mania hanging back or after? No, I'm talking like two years ago. Oh, okay. okay. Like when Shane was feuding with Kevin Owens and you see Sami Zayn pull him out of the announce table and Shane goes crashing. I think they took a wrong turn with Sami. Sami, he screams face. He doesn't scream heel. Or he's not as convincing. Yeah. Not that he can't be, but it's like... It doesn't work for him It doesn't work. It just, like, it just doesn't. Um... Who's winning? Shinsuke. I'm going with Shinsuke. So the belt stays around. The, ba- the belt stays around Shinsuke. I think I'm going to pick that. Not as the safe bet, but it just seems like... There's not much in this rivalry. Just One of that. the most important belts on the card has the least amount of buildup. And that's sad. That is very sad. How far we've come. But moving on to the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship belt match. We have... The current tag champs, the new day of just Big E and Xavier Woods versus 
the revival of Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder. Um, for some reason, I'm just... I get it. The revival is now hanging around Randy. It kind of feels like this is a... Survivor Series-esque? No, I, I was kind of seeing this as like... This feels like it's... um. What do you call it? Like Legacy 3.0. Mm. Mm. But just not as like exciting because it's like... Oh, there's Randy. But then there's the revival. No. Kind of like kind of like now where it's like, oh, it's the new day. Crickets. Okay, yeah, like the new day is not as exciting, and and they're finally doing the whole separate you two and you. Yeah, but it doesn't just like I, are you even excited for this match? I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. Okay, match of the night. This match, match of the night. You have to sell it. Revival is one of the greatest tag teams right now. Yes, they are. Their look, probably not the most appealing, but their psychology, their, their actual, the act of being a heel with these guys is prevalent. The New Day can have a, a great match with any tag team, and we've seen that. If, if they're given enough time, I'm not talking about a five-minute squash match. If they're given a proper 10 to 15 minutes, I'm predicting we see a match of the night. That's a lot to put up there. Because um, because I I've, I've seen these guys. Okay. We we we've, we've had match cards where we're like, "Oh, off you go." But then it's like, oh, "Oh, this was a good match." Um in regards to who's winning, I wanted I feel like they might tease a Randy Orton title change cuz like if Revival Re- Revival wins, it's like, "Oh, we got the tag belts off of you. There's one more thing left. The WWE Championship." Who's winning? I'm going to say New Day. New Day. New Day. I'm putting I'm this on New that Day. they keep the belts. It just stays the way it is for now until we can develop. But I think their rivalry is not over. Not by a long time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, then we have moving forward the 205 Live Cruiserweight Championship on the line with current champion Drew Gulak. Gulak. Gulak versus Humberto Carrillo versus Lince Dorado. Again, it's kind of hard to keep up with 205 Live with so much on the WWE Network. But For only 9.99. I guess Drew's been carrying that belt. Yeah. Very For well. A minute. And like, he's been selling it a little better than most other competitors have or have tried to step up to take it from him. Um, if this is on the pre-show, it needs to be the last match to get us hyped up for the show. I, again, if I would have kept up with 205 recently, I would be like, no, I'm sold on this guy. I'm sold on this guy. I'm just saying Drew keeps the belt. I'm going to go with Lindsay. Why Lindsay? He's been there for a minute. Um, I think he has the ability to have great matches. He's also a great, like, uh, cruiserweight. Not that none of them are not, but, um... I would like to see Lince as a champion. He's been there for a while. I think the guy needs his due. And Triple H is always very good with like, okay, one guy was champion. Let's make someone else champion. Let's put the spotlight on them. So I'm going to go with Lince. I don't know the second guy at all. He's very new. Sorry, guys. It's it's a busy life. We can't watch all 50 hours of footage each week on the network. Moving forward to the rematch from SummerSlam. Your current... WWE champion, one formerly from Ghana, formerly Jamaican, without the accent, man, Kofi Kingston. Aren't you supposed to have an accent? No, he was, not me. Um, I can't fake that to save my life. Versus one Randall Keith, I'm going to call him, and I don't mean Randy, I mean his opponent, stupid. Stupid, stupid. Kofi versus Randy in a stupid match. Orton. Uh, so we got the a weird conclusion, 
And SummerSlam, yeah. And we didn't even see that the 10 count was even going on because we were so focused on the story, which was, I guess, worked. Yeah. Because we were so like, oh, he's going to do something sadistic and crazy. And then it made Kofi look like what we've been wanting to see since he won his belt. A ferocious, dangerous, I'm willing to take risks yeah. and protect what I care about champion. Yeah. I think this goes to another match. Yeah. I think the belt stays, but yet, what's their names win the tag belts? Okay. Here, well, Maybe. Even though I predict New Day is going to win it, maybe if we want to keep it going, Randy gets like that irk from like Dash and Wilder. Yeah. Or Dawson and Wilder. So, sorry. Yeah. Oh, you didn't win. I thought you were the Apex Predator. I yeah. thought you were the Viper. What happened? And it's like, all right, I'll take it further. I'll take my aggression out on you in Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell. Because... We're revisiting something from years ago that ended kind of anticlimactic after a few matches. But the build up for years and years of like yeah. how he really feels, how one was put down, the other is finally up there. But it's like, no, you're still putting me down. Yeah. I, I don't know how you feel about this. I see Kofi winning. Um, so that's your pick? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I do see this spilling until Hell in Cell. Um, I think we're going to see slowly start seeing that darker Kofi where he's going to pull out all the stops and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I see Kofi winning uh, and this thing go. You're right. It's not done yet. Not by a long shot. Like it needs to have like a definitive ending, but not where it's so lackluster. I think if you want to end it well, I think by Bischoff saying, hey, you guys need to Take it a little further. Yeah. That's the one match where you can do it. At Hell in a Cell. In the Cell. Right. And I've seen what Kofi's capable of doing in the chamber. I want to see what he can do in in the Cell by himself. Against Randy. And we've all seen how dangerous Randy is when he's put in a more violent situation. Uh, Moving forward, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship. Here we go. Your current... Unbelievably turned heel SmackDown champion Bailey versus your former eight time. Not is it nine time? I don't fucking care. Former women's champion Charlotte. I'm no emulation of my father, even though I am by everything I do. Woo! Flair. What's her real name? Ashley. No. In our world, what's her Oh, name? um, Blonde Cena. There we go. Blonde Cena sucks. Blonde Cena sucks. Um, we saw a great match last night. All like, and I mean this from like in all seriousness. Um, great match between the four horsewomen. I think they prove why they are the four pillars that are holding up the women's division. Um, I think Bailey goes over Charlotte shenanigans, foot on the rope, um, uses an illegal weapon when the ref is down, maybe a chair shot. But I do see possibly Becky and Sasha being involved in this match and possibly a Bailey and a Charlotte involved in the Becky and Sasha match. So I see a combustion between the two. So you ruled Becky versus Sasha no contest. Yes. And you see them coming back later in the night to finish what was started. Or you can have the reverse. Okay. So, do you want to call no contest on this too? No, I say Bailey wins. Oh, so she retains. She retains. Okay. Yeah. I would say she retains. Charlotte doesn't get her ninth belt, tenth belt, whatever. Um, my thing is, and this doesn't include building what I want to build. What happens is that Bailey is not getting close to the victory. And you see Sasha come out at first to like, oh, I'm going to make sure Bailey wins. Yeah. I'm going to help her. To make it even more de- devious and evil, I see a double turn. 
Not for her face, but even more anticlimactic in Evil Heel. She hits Bailey with a chair. And she pins, she lays Bailey out on Charlotte. Charlotte's out. Let's Bailey keep the belt. No referee around. Becky comes out, gets her revenge on Sasha. I guess one, two, kick out, let the match keep going. Bailey's not worried about so much what happened yet. Um, Charlotte is aware of everything that happens, but yet still loses somehow. And yet, the other two come back out. And you continue the whole four horsewomen against each other. Yeah. And I would leave it like that, just for the sake of the pay-per-view. Now, if we want to build on the rest involving four other people, you can have where that ends in no contest as well. They're all fighting each other. And for some odd reason, you just have someone come out with a microphone laughing. Just laughing and coming out unexpectedly because she still believes she's the Raw Women's Champion. And just staring out like, these are the four horsewomen. This is it. These are your four. Like, you turn her full heel at this point. Yeah. But I would say that squashes whatever is going on with everybody there yeah. too abruptly. So you save that for another pay-per-view or eventually it has to happen sometime soon. Because the fact that we saw that four of them involved last night is already like, okay, we kind of said this would happen. And it's slowly starting to get the ball rolling. Planting the seeds. Yeah. It's just... It has to be done right. Would you maybe be an advocate, ironically, for if, let's say, Becky retains, she goes into hell in a cell, and she defends it against, I don't know, a Sasha Banks. And then from there, you have a Charlotte come in, a Bailey come in, but then she comes in, Raccoon. Mm -hmm. And then kind of pulls a shield where... Shayna Baszler comes out and they surround the ring. Inside Hell in a Cell, you have the four horsewomen of MMA reigning supreme over the four horsewomen of the WWE. Well, here's the thing. Okay, I kind of would do that, but I would do it like this. I would do it where your current four beat on each other so badly, but they leave one of them alone. Yeah. And I think the one that has to be the sacrificial lamb... Would have to be Becky. Yeah. And as she's there, like, I guess fighting off Sasha and getting the advantage, you see Raccoon's music hit, her come out, but not running to the cage, not being so hyped to get in there. You just slowly see her walking down the ramp. Calmly taking her. Yeah. But then somehow, Becky throws, uh, Sasha out the ring. She's like, all right, I've been waiting for you to come back for months now. It's almost been half a year. Let's go, you and me. Underneath the ring the whole time, we had Shayna, Jasmine, and... Marina. Marina. And they start surrounding the ring. Shayna opens the door, and they're all on one side. Right. Bailey's laid out by... Bailey... Sasha and Charlotte are laid out by the three of them yeah. as well. Because you really want to have Becky all by herself like, oh crap, I'm all alone. Yeah. All right, I guess I really have to prove I'm the man. Yeah. But it fails epically. And those four stand above her like, this is your four, this is our four. That would make more sense because you kind of have to make one of them look like the weak one. It can't be oh Sasha. Oh my god. Uh-huh. You, you probably... I've talked about this. You have the four horsewomen of MMA give Becky the beating of a lifetime. I would maybe get a little bit blood involved. Not bleeding, but like the little pills that they take and they start... Yeah. yeah. 
Like busted in the mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have that, and you kind of play like, okay, Becky is sidelined. She took this crazy beating. She's sidelined. So the four horsemen of MMA pick on the other three. And then you finally get that moment that I've been talking about, that Stone Cold Steve Austin pop moment where it's like the, the seven of them are battling and you can see the, the, three, the other three are outnumbered and they're getting their ass kicked. That theme song hits. She runs to the ring and she kicks everybody's ass. And it finally comes down to, maybe this would be pulling the trigger like very early, but Survivor Series is right around the corner. And then you go, okay, you guys want to do this? Survivor Series, four versus four, let's do it. And then you book it, four versus four. I mean, you could do that. You could also like kind of make, like if you want to carry it further to WrestleMania, like you can make the four versus four happen well, you can make the WWE four look like not as a full functioning team. Yeah, like there's still there's cracks. There's ego like yeah. with Sasha and Charlotte, with Bailey siding with Sasha, with yeah. Becky like no, I'm in charge completely, you know. But you see the other four still like you guys can't even get along. Yeah, exactly. I think that can happen again. All of it's done right, but it would have to start this Sunday. Yeah. But you can't you can't just throw it all at once immediately. That's the it problem. Ruins it. Yeah, that's the problem. Cause again, Survivor Series is right around I think cause everyone ideally wanted a Survivor Series match. A WrestleMania match would have been good, but it's like the traditional Survivor Series one by one eliminated is kind of what everybody was looking for. Like that's that's a main event of main events. But I don't know. We'll see. We could be dead wrong. They might not even do any and of this. I mean, they kind of... They planted a seed last night, I would like to think. And we kind of said that that would happen. Someone's There'd be a tag listening. match. What? Someone's listening. I, I, I don't know what he's saying. But, like, I'm just saying if I heard him say that again, I mean... Someone's listening. Oh! Yeah! It was credit for the idea. Or a job. Fair enough. Or a job. Um, so you're saying Bailey? I'm saying Bailey. I'm saying no contest. Okay. So we have swapped. Yes. For this match. Yes. At least. And then moving forward to where we'll see these two twice in the same night. We're yeah. going to start with one match. The current Raw Tag Team Champions, Seth. Turn it down. Frickin' Rollins. Sako Rollins, yeah. Along with his co-champion tag team partner, Braun. Come get these hands, Strowman. Strowman. Versus... Not Bobby. Not Rob. Robert. Rude. Rick, you mean? <laughs> yeah, kind of looks like him. <laughs> And his new acquired tag team partner, Dolph Ziggler. The Ziggity Zag Zigster. So, here's two things. One, Dolph is still involved somehow with a championship match. Somehow. Yeah. Two, I just noticed this. Where the hell is AJ Styles? Said every belt's on the line. Oh, no, they did announce it. We just didn't talk about it. I just saw it. Never mind, never mind. They did? He's going to defend it against Cedric. Yeah, they're continuing that. Um, AJ Styles for the win. Um, yeah, I'm, we're not even going to... I'm just calling it AJ wins with the help of uh, the OC. OC. And then it's a clean win for him either way. Um, but yeah, you, you have this thing where AJ's still involved with like Seth and Braun. Not just Seth. He's getting into Braun's ire as well. And it's, it's like it's getting teased. Yeah. But it's like who benefits in this tag match first? Cause if you put the belts on uh Robert Rick and Dolph, it's like, okay, well, we gave Dolph a belt. Not the belt he wanted. Or that I wanted. But we gave him something. Right. And then if you help Keep the belts on 
the other two on Seth and Braun, it's like, you guys are going to fight later. What's the payoff on all this? Like, I, I just find this this tag team thing is weird. Funk? Yeah. It, it's not funk. It's just weird. I'm, like, it makes no sense to me. I'm going to call it, I think that Seth and Braun retain. Because I think that that gives you an excuse to build on Seth and Braun. Like, we're tag team champions, but then Braun slowly eyes that WWE Universal Championship. Like, yeah, we're tag team champions, but my eye is on that other belt you got. I think that a Braun heel turn is maybe coming. um, Because I think it's been a long time coming. Like, we want to see that monster among men who just flips everything over and just wreaks havoc. But he doesn't do it in regards where people were in favor of it. He does it where he's like naturally terrorizing. Yeah. And being the monster among men. Yeah. Um, so I say that Seth and Braun retain. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, I put that you put AJ. Okay. <laughs> That's how bad that is. Who are you choosing? AJ. No, no. Oh, I, I, I still keep it with Seth and Braun. Okay. Keeping their belts. I, I think it, it, it only makes sense because it's just like. Why would you take the belts off them and then have them go to war with each other? And then it's just... Yeah, we talked about that where they give you something and then they, they take it away like 24 hours later. It's like, then why do we do it in the first place? Um, like when Seth had to be in a battle royal, even though he was going to get a rematch. And remember that? Brock. Although it was a good match because you gave Brock yeah. more than three minutes. I, I, I told everyone, you give Brock time, he can wrestle a good match. But going to the main event, Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman. There's a lot of speculation outside of the match that the fiend, Mr. Bray Wyatt, has thrown his hat metaphorically into the ring saying, I want to challenge one of you right. to hell in the cell. Let's just talk about their, their, their match first. Is there a reason to see Seth retain? Or is there a reason to put the belt on Braun and have him be the new Universal Champion, but not as a face, as a heel? I honestly believe that Seth retaining gives you the Braun and Seth dynamic that I talked about, where they have a few tag team matches, great tag team matches. Okay, we're a good team, we're a unit. But it seems like Braun is consistently eyeballing that Universal Championship. Like that's like the one belt he yeah. wants the most. And then when it comes to a point when they lose the Tag Team Championships, he goes, Okay, well, we're no longer partners because we don't got the belts anymore. Now I'm going to kick your ass and take your Universal Championship. Because that belongs to me. Exactly. That's where you build that. It's like, okay, I, I, I teamed with you because we were champs. We don't got the belts anymore. I have no reason. I'm going to kick your ass now. Um, in regards to The Fiend, it makes sense because then it's like Hell in a Cell, like the demon structure, like Hell, like that makes sense because it's, it's The Fiend. I'm just thinking how you would bring it all together. Well, okay. I didn't see last night's Firefly Fun House. What, what was the center around? He brought up Austin's name like twice. But then Bray's like, oh, but a rattlesnake is a rattlesnake. You can't really take anything to heart. It's going to rattle. And then there was a clock that said 316. He smashed it, and then it said 1119. And I'm trying to figure out what the hell that means. Bray always has hidden triple, double, quadruple meanings in yeah. everything he does. Everything is calculated with Bray. But- and he talked about Braun and Seth, too. And he's like, uh, you guys, you know, should you, sh- you guys should be friends. And he's like, you can have friends. Friends forgive, but the fiend never forgives. He never forgets. And he does that cold stare into the camera, and it's like, okay, bro, you you're gonna do something. Like, you're throwing it out that you're gonna do something. So, I don't know. I'm thinking Seth definitively wins the match. And then maybe afterwards we get a fiend interference. Um, or maybe an AJ Styles interferes in the match. And then, you know. Ooh. Well, I would th- Okay, I would think because AJ still has this thing where he needs to be the universal champion. And I think it's just his character build of like, hey, you need to be egotistical. You need to be the yeah. guy 
who deserves quote unquote the belt even though you've done nothing to really earn it. What? The Universal Belt. He he hasn't done much. What has he done? Face Seth maybe once or twice? That's it. He's a United States champion. They don't want none. They don't want none. Um I mean if you have AJ interfere, let's just say his interference goes bad. And it fucks with Braun. That's what I'm thinking. It's going to screw with Braun and then Seth retaliates. But I would like to think if you're going to involve The Fiend, you involve AJ in the match. He goes after Seth but accidentally goes after Braun. Braun chases him down. The OC is up in the ramp. They take him out. Seth wins arguably, unfortunately, by a count. But, as much as you, as soon as you hear the words burn it down, it goes burn it down. Oh, and then lights Lights up. all go out slowly, and you can end the show with Bray attacking Seth and standing over him in the middle of the ring with yeah. just one light. Yeah. And you can even have Bray hold the belt himself. Okay. Would I go even further to have him disappear and take the belt with him? Probably. Okay, so planting that seed. Kind of like, all right, I said I wanted to face one of you. I know who won now. How bad do you want your belt back? Come to the Firefly Funhouse. Like, I want them to involve the Funhouse. Like, I want... But I don't want them to see what we see. We always see the Funhouse in its light, humor... Yay, it's it's a nice place to be. And then we catch glimpses of it being evil and demonic and torn apart. But you have Seth go after that belt. Kind of like in this Saw-esque type of like fun house. It's twisted, it's demented. Yeah, puzzle game. He doesn't find it. Yeah. And even then, he doesn't even find the room where the show's held. Yeah. Like it's... For some reason, non-existent, even though we know it is. And then, you can, you can oh, so much. Bray, and Bray could be like, you really want this belt back? Come find me in hell. In hell in a cell. Like, there's so much that Bray can do. And, and I've heard that Vince has nothing That's to do with too. everything yeah. that Bray has done so far. And, that, and this is what's been selling... Bray. That's yeah. I and I think that's what he proved with the Vince puppet last week with the hey hey boss. Hi. Ooh, you alright? Funny bone, right? Yeah. I think uh, I he... tore my quad like Kevin Nash. Um oh, uh, finger poke of doom. Too soon. Um <laughs> There's so much you can do and yeah. and then Bray's done it all, all on his own with this character. Which means that this guy has to only invoke the trust of Vince. So, I don't know. Like, it seems like... I don't think Vince was ever going to lose Bray to leave. But I think it's like Bray came up to him like, Hey, you're losing out a lot on fans. Yeah. I know what can save this. You just have to trust me. And then that theme song hit for the first time. I, I was still terrified. A lot of people... There's there's people torn that his match wasn't match of the night. Just because, oh, he came out, he kicked his ass a few minutes. <sighs> the SummerSlam match? Yeah. I will tell you this. From a... Segment standpoint, that was the most interesting part of the night. Match-wise, I'm sorry, I gotta give it to Seth and Braun. Because uh, why? Seth and Brock. what? What is that? You said Seth and Brock. You said Seth and Braun. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Seth and Brock. Um, because uh, Finn and Wyatt, it, it, it was a match, but it wasn't like a match. It was like a manslaughter of one person. It's like squashing someone in two minutes. He he did it very theatrically. He did it very interestingly. I'll say that okay for the theatrics, the the build up, the story, the yeah. whole thing of we finally get the fiend, the, the entrance, A plus, yes, all of that, yes. 
As a wrestling fan, perspective wise, on a match, uh, yeah, you, you you kill them in two just minutes. the match. We're not like yeah, no, the, the match is just the match. The match itself. sucked itself. The match was like okay, you're kicking his ass. Finn's trying to get an upper hand, and then you just squash him. Yeah, it was like. A but deep. Seth and Brock was like, oh no, forth, it's back like back you gave Brock more than five minutes. He gave you a match, even though he lost. Clean. I, I want to see matches where Brock has to fight. Yeah. So, with all that, closing sentiments of Clash of Champions. Please be a good pay-per-view. Please start building your stories for November. Because apparently I'm not logical enough to come up with such shit like this. Ooh. I'm not logical. I'm not logical. And I think I can logically bring an end to this episode. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you all next time.